If we want to make sure, for example, that this person with the green t-shirt in the next frame is always the same person. How can we do then personal identification? Hi, welcome to this new video. I'm Sergio, I'm a computer vision consultant, developer and constructor. At PySource, we build computer vision solutions to help companies improve their process efficiency, reliability and scalability. Today, I'm going to discuss about personal identification on retail store and airports because it is one of the lately most common requests I get. Is it possible to track people, track unique people inside stores, airports, crowded places? And also another question get, that I get a lot, can we build a solution that works either on Raspberry Pi or on an NVIDIA Jetson Nano to do this? We're going to discuss everything in this video. But let's start sharing the benefits of such solutions. Then we can get more into some technical aspect and show some uh, sample and some prototype of this solution's work. There are benefits for both sides, for the operator and for the client's passengers. Let's take the example of an airport. For the passengers, the benefits will be shortest waiting time because of the better queue management. And also another thing that I, I also saw in some of the airport, you can have some predictability of your journey. For example, now you can get also the waiting time. You can see that I remember I was a few months ago at the Milan airport and there was a huge queue before the security check. And I was expecting there it would take one hour or even more like waiting because there were so many people, but there was showing on the screen that there was written like 15 to 20 minutes waiting time. That can be done with computer vision because you can estimate how many people are there considering the security checks that are open in the average waiting time. The information was very accurate. So this is good benefit that passengers can get. Another thing is also, with the better queue management, the passengers will get also more safety because you can avoid an overcrowded place. This client side, uh, uh, how about the operator? Also for the operator, there are huge benefits because whether it's for the airport or for the retail store, you can have a better layout of the store due to the information that you can get from, from such solution. We'll get also more into the information later in the video. Layout, you can have real-time information so that you can know how to allocate resources, whether it's staff, uh, whether it's security, for example. And then also more incre increased sale and revenue because of better layout that you can build thanks to all the information that you get. Uh, let's now get into some technical aspects about this solution, because based on the questions I get, I see that there are a lot of misunderstanding based on what you can achieve and also I want to emphasize how person detection and person re-identification are two completely different things and there is a huge gap in terms of what you can get from them in terms of complexity. I'm now, I'm now going to show you some of the samples. I have a video from a retail store and I'm now going to run person detection on this video. When I run person detection, and you might have seen this on a lot of AI and computer vision videos on YouTube or anywhere in the internet, when we have person detection, we see that we are detecting the person and we are surrounding the person with a bounding box. So what you see right now is not now in all of them, it's possible also to improve the accuracy of this, but that's not the goal. In most of the people at least that, that are well visible in this video, we see a bounding box because we are detecting the person. This is person detection. Person detection works on a frame by frame. It means that we are processing the video image by image and image after image, we are drawing a bounding box on each person. What does this mean? This means that we don't identify uniquely each single person. So on each frame, we don't know if the person that we saw before is the same person or, or if it's a new person. And this is a crucial step for such solution to have a unique identification because if you want, for example, to count how many people are entering in a store, you can't 
rely on a single detection because you want to make sure that the person that it's crossing so uh, if i uh let this video go we want to make sure for example that this person with the green t-shirt in the in this frame is this person in the next in the next frame is always the same person this is person detection a second step to improve person detection is person tracking let's pay very close attention to the left side to these two people the guy with the green t-shirt and the guy with the black t-shirt now we see we have id associated which is 31 to the guy with the green t-shirt and 33 with the guy to the guy with the black t-shirt now let's follow them carefully while they are moving the guy with the green t-shirt 31 for the moment we lose track of that guy it reappears and it keeps still the id 31 because somehow the object tracking was following the motion and was able to do that despite the was occlusion so object tracking somehow it's some good approach it's a it's not a very basic algorithm there is some sophisticated algorithm be, uh, behind object tracking and somehow it works the other person with id 38 we lost the id of that person and if we go further we see that now the id of the guy with the green t-shirt is 42 the one with the black t-shirt is 44 so we lost also the id of that person and now let me pause this what's the problem that if you want to track and identify the specific person this cannot work because now for only two people we got five different ideas so if we were checking if we wanted to check information like the uh, estimated waiting time uh, of the people in the store then we have five ideas for two people so it's totally unreliable how can be this problem solved the way to solve this problem is to identify correctly the person the normal approach that are used for example on security checks like passport control to identify a specific person is facial recognition for example facial recognition is not possible with such low resolution images especially from the cctv cameras because whether they can have even higher resolution but the resolution of the face is always very small it's a very small amount of pixels and we need we need at least 100 by 100 pixels for the face to have some reliable accuracy for the tracking of the face to have a unique facial recognition so it's not possible in this case so we need to find another way of doing person re-identification how can we do then personal identification there are a few algorithms for personal identification that are available and i want to show how what's the concept behind them and also some live implementation on this specific video now we will do personal re-identification what do they do we want to when we detect the people we want to extract the image of the person we can store that image and then when we get new ids we want to make a comparison of the ids that we get so let me give you an example right here what i did in this specific code that i'm using right now i made a real-time extraction of the IDs that we get for example we have ID 42 and 44 for each frame that we have this I'm going to extract the images so if I go on 44 ID 44 we have here ID 44 you see we have the frame so for each frame where we detect ID 44 we have the person so if I click any of them and I zoom this one, we have this person. Let me go on ID 42. So 42, we have the other person uh, with the green t-shirt. If we go on any other ID, let's say ID 21, we have only one ID, only one picture. So I, I want to find something where we have more pictures. Let's say 53, okay, 53, we have another person on all this folder what we want to do is we want to compare them we want to see which id is the same 
for example, we know that ID 42, this person with the green t-shirt and ID 31 are the same. What the algorithm is going to do is going to compare all of them and re-identify the same ID. So ideally, an algorithm that's, for, that's working well will give again the ID 31 uh, to the same person. This specific algorithm that I'm using is OSNet. I'm going to leave also some links down below so that you can read more about the research of this algorithm. Uh, it's made specifically for personal identification and the idea is that we can't get the facial recognition of the person but we can get the features of this person. So we will see that the person has a t-shirt of a certain color, it will have the, uh, the, the clothes of a certain color or a certain type and also we can have with a good camera placement we can have like the same person from different angles so it will be precise also when we get again the person from a different angle because if you take a front picture of the person and then you try to identify the person taking it from the back of course that person will be different and it will not be reliable so it's good to take into account all of this information so what i'm doing right now i have implemented personal identification on this code so in this case it's not in real time it's elaborating now i will press r to identify so now what the code is doing is taking all the images all the id all the images for each single id and it's processing the images for this specific id and we need to get now back the id 42 so you see in this case it's worked well we get again the same id 31 and 33 for the people that were detected originally with that specific ID. And of course, this is a very basic sample on this video. Uh, it's very complex, this solution, because it takes a lot of computational power to do this, because now uh, I'm using a graphic card, a very powerful graphic card to do this operation, and it takes a lot of seconds to do this because it has to process a lot of frames for each single person to correctly make the identification. Also, another aspect to take into account is that to this solution to be reliable need to be trained on each single scenario. So you can't just place a camera, apply personal identification algorithm, and, and the algorithm will work right away. You need to properly study the camera placement, make a training, so a lot of data, uh, from that specific location and then you can have a reliable tracking and identification of the person. Let's now address hardware. Can you build such solution on Jetson Nano or Raspberry Pi? I want to address this question because I, guess I get this asked a lot, not only for this specific project but for different projects and what I notice is that either projects are underestimating in complexity or the, over, uh, the Jetson Nano is uh, overestimated in capacity. You cannot do this in, in, with the Jetson Nano because it requires a lot of computational power. Jetson Nano is a very small, nice device that you can use uh, to do some simple, small uh, prototypes, but you cannot do on the Jetson Nano, with, which has a very limited capacity, such uh, complex solutions. There are some limitations, some, something you can do with, with Jetson Nano, you can do object detection, you can do also object tracking, and so it could be reliable, I can give you some uh, examples, so if you have a camera placement right here, let me draw, let's say that you have a camera right here, you want to place camera with Jetson Nano, and Jetson Nano will be looking only, let's say people that are coming down from these stairs, so you see there are stairs there, people that are coming from these stairs, with Jetson Nano you select a limited area and from top you can count and even with good accuracy how many people are passing. Why? Because you have a very limited area, you are tracking people from the top so there is no problem with overlapping because you will be tracking the head so you can get a very good precision on that but that's the most you can get with the Jetson Nano. You can't have an infrastructure 
where you can do personal identification and so on. You might achieve that with the Raspberry Pi. I don't work generally with the Raspberry Pi, but it's very really limited and not suitable usually for uh, for such project, especially when you were when you want something in real time because you need a lot of uh, computational power. To work with such solution, you need a more complex infrastructure where you also need a server to process all the data. So especially if there are multiple cameras on a big store and you want to make the re-identification on multiple cameras, then you need a proper infrastructure to handle uh, this very big amount of data. Do you need to send it to the cloud? Not specifically, you don't need to send it to the cloud, but you need to, to have an in-house server uh, powerful enough to process all of this. And I know that uh, mostly you don't want to send this to the client for all the privacy reasons, data protection, but you need the infrastructure to handle that. Let's now quickly dis discuss about the KPI that you can get from, from such solution. For the retail store, you can get KPI like, for example, dwell time. Dwell time, and of course, you can get this only once you have the personal identification, so not widgets on and so on. You can get dwell time. You can get heat map. Heat map. And from this view that you see right here, for example, it's possible to create a two-dimensional a two-dimensional map where even if you have this view, we can see the people that are from the top and you will see dots instead of the people. So if we have 33, the ID 33 and the ID 3, something like this, the ID 59, 53. Let's suppose that this is the, the map from top. So here is ID 59, for example. Here's ID 53. And you can follow this ID. So you can uh, create the heat map, you can follow the ID, you can get, so the flow where people are the most, spend the most time, where people spend the least time uh, and so on. You can get also the total number of people that enter in the shop, total number, the people that leave the shop. There are so many things that you can get with this. And this is all for this video. Please let me know if there is anything else you want to discuss about this specific subject or similar computer vision solutions below down in the comments. This is all for this video. See you in the next one.